um, I will do quite a gentle class, but I will start you um, standing in a very particular pose or set of poses. So today's class is going to be very gentle. It's really hot. So just start to sway from side to side. Moving all your five energies, and so energies are defined by um, classical yoga. And you can lift your heel or stay with your heel on the ground, depending on how much you want to turn. Your hands can just sway low or they can sway high and around your shoulders and I was very interested I followed an online Tai Chi lesson by one of the interesting guy and they do this for opening for Tai Chi and Qi Kong as well and they do it for ages so they really bend the knees and they really get into the movement and they do it for ages not just a few turns, they really loosen everything up. And one of the things that um, he said, which I thought was quite interesting for me, is that when you turn from side to side, drop your attention to your navel, and they call it leading the movement with your belly. So your tummy is, is turning from side to side. So your tummy makes the movement. And that for me subtly altered the aspect of the movement. And come gently to move less and then come to stand still. Just move your feet to hip width apart if they weren't before. And just raise your arms just to shoulder height. Raise them above shoulder height and then lower them to shoulder height. Hug. And then as we did yesterday, rub your outer arms. It's complicated, but this forms part of the post-traumatic stress comforting strategy. And then just raise your arms out again, stretch your fingers, raise your palms up, see how far you can turn them back. I'm not going very far. That looks very lovely, Pepsi. And then turn them down and then turn them round the other way. I have to clump my arm to do that. And then again, remembering the crossover if you can to cross your arms the other way and just to rub up and down. If you want to explore the thoracic um, opening of your spine, you would bend your knees and just come forward slightly and that opens you up between the shoulder blades. And then just coming to standing and releasing your hands. So with your head, just gently turn to one side Take an in and an out breath. Breathing in, come back to the center and breathing out very gently, turn to the other side. And then come back to the center. And using either your nose or your chin, whichever visualization works for you, to draw a figure of eight horizontally with your nose. So breathing in as you go up, breathing out as you circle and come down. Starting to breathe in as you go through the center of your eight, going up and breathing out as you're going down. Just a few times. So you're beginning here to pulse to move your neck. And you're beginning to um, ask the left and the right side of the brain is to communicate with each other. And also there's a very gentle swish 
of fluid movements. I can feel something within my hair. I wouldn't know how I would define that. But just a slight tingling on the outer extremities of your head as you start to move from side to side. And the other aspect of moving your neck is that you're beginning to have a subtle effect on your thyroid and your parathyroid at the base of your throat, in that neck area. And the thyroid, I'm sure I've said this so many times, connects to your um, adrenals, your stress response. So we're working in some ways to reset our metabolic control. And then come to the center. And just circle your hands up, that lovely dance movement that I'm not so good at. Patsy would be lovely at this. And then circle your hands, yes, down. Very lovely. And again, up. The fingers stretched out, it's a sense of touch, it links to the heart, and then it also, of course, links very close to your respiratory function. So your respiratory function would need to be strengthened as part of your immune system. And of course, raising your arms, however high you want to raise them, opens under the arms, so it connects into the lymph system. at the upper part of the body and then just release. And then your Hakini Mudra, the tucks of the fingers together. And this time just sway from side to side, making your sway as small or as big as you would like. So this works on many levels too. And then just bring your hands to the center and just focus on the tips of your fingers for an in and an out breath. And release. With your um, any hand, it will be your dominant hand. Take your arm out, that you can see me better here, and look at the tip of your thumb. That's not, um, it, you can stay like that, but it will become very tiring on your arm. So if you want to memorize where the tip of your thumb is, just drop your arm to stop your shoulder hurting and just have that imaginary focus. And now that imaginary focus becomes the center of a clock. And keeping your head still, you can drop your arm if you want to, Raise your eyes up to 12 o'clock. Your head stays still. It's just your eyes that are moving. Bring your eyes to the center of your clock, back to your focus point. And then very gently, again, without moving your head too much, let your eyes do the work as you drop your eyes to your six o'clock. Come back to the center. Bring your eyes to the right to your three o'clock. Your head stays still. Come back to the center and move your eyes to the left. Your nine o'clock. Come back to the center. Drop your eyes up to 10 past. Come back through the center and drop them to 22. And come to the center. And then drop your eyes and move your eyes up to 10 to. Come through the center and move your eyes to 20 past. And come to the center. Bring your eyes up to 12 o'clock and smoothly move your eyes in a circle around your clock. Think of not jumping, but a smooth movement. And notice where your eyes tend to strain. For me, it's around the 25 past and the 25 to, and I tend to jump. 
And then once you've got to 12 o'clock, reverse to yourself. You're going backwards around your imaginary dial. Come to the center. Rub your hands together. You have energy points, little nardies in your hands. So there's a magnified electrical force in your hands. And uh, if you then, from your rubbed hands, place them over your eyes and open your eyes into the darkness of your hand, it's very soothing. It creates a kind of a bathing of your eyes. It's called palming, not unsurprisingly. And then just release. So while we're here, just get the heels of your hands. And with the heels of your hands, just place them above your um tops of your ears and just press in. So go from the ears to the temples, just pressing the palms in, and the temples going back, press, release, press, release, press, release, press, release, almost towards the back of your head. And then press, release, press, release, towards your temples again. So this is looking at both the eye by the temples and also the ears above the tops of the ears. Just one of the many points. Press the palms and release, press, release, press, release, press, release, and press, release. And then release your hands. Very good for eyesight, what we've just done, and this is one well, also very good for your ears and your hearing. So just lift and roll your shoulders back. And then take the backs of your thumbs together, place them at your third eye. And just smooth the backs of your thumbs from the center out towards your temples. Just do that a couple of times. You can drop your head slightly if that's easier. Just smoothing a quarter of five out to the temples and off at the temples. And then just drop your thumb to your bridge of your nose and just gently smooth from the nose under the cheekbones out a couple of times and drop your thumbs down a bit more. And drop them further. And then finally you can get down to the chin where you just use the backs of your knuckles just to trace along the jawline, the mandible area, which links into stress in lots of other areas. And up again, not leaving the chin out. You can either slide your thumbs or you can use the backs of your hands just to stroke upwards. Freestyle movement. And this is very unattractive, but your teeth, I think, might have done this with you perhaps before Patsy, and perhaps do it at home when you're not in front of the camera. But if you drop your fingers, I look like a monkey, if I lift my upper lip and put my fingers immediately under my upper lip on the gum above my top two teeth, they're too dense there. And massaging those dents is keying into an acupressure point for um, activating getting blood through to the teeth. If you slide your fingers to just about here, um, underneath, there are another two points there. And if you massage there, you can you probably need to do it. It's a bit horrid, very gross, I'm sorry. But just massaging there, you're activating the blood flow um, partially through into your teeth. And my dentist at the time was very um, fascinated to um, Ayurveda, medicine, which is the medicine side of yoga, links um, each tooth to a blood flow and an energy meridian through to the organs. So according to Ayurveda, and according to which tooth is out, which tooth has pain, reflects the state of your organs. It is quite fascinating, because when you think of the body and divided into lines going through, the blood goes through and the nerves go through, through the face, and they come down and go through the organs, and that was the, the theory. But um, the final thing before we leave the face and then come down to start the yoga session properly 
is to get your thing, your second finger and your thumb and just slightly press the tip of your ear and release, press and release, press and release. And where the tip of the ear is slightly sore, minding your earrings, and then go up again, both hands, is um, your ear is believed to reflect your foot in like reflexology in your hand. So the top of the, the ear is meant to reflect the top of your head. And as you just pinch in the middle part here is where the um, cerefex area is and that's coming down to the lower abdominal area. So you can just play with your ears anytime. And then bring your hands together and come finally down to the mat. But we're going to come with our legs out in front of us and work on the feet. So I go, hopefully you can see my legs are straight out in front of me. And I'm just going to bounce my legs, just activating circulation. And then I'm going to, uh, you don't have to physically bounce, but you can, your big toes together. Feet out in a V, big toes together out. It's a, like a, a quick movement. Again, this is setting up a very minor vibration in the whole body. And a vibration equates to movement, and movement is the opposite of stagnation. So you want movement in your body. When things stagnate through stress or worry or lack of exercise or seated, is where you can build up um, all kinds of accumulation of things that you don't want. And then similarly, just stretch your left heel away and release the left foot. Stretch the right heel away and release. Stretch the left heel. This isn't just the foot and the ankle, it goes all the way up to the um, hip level. And I was reading last night, if I remember correctly, it was the ilium um, just um, working into the flexibility of the hips. And then, as we so often do, circle the ankles gently in one direction. And you would normally slow the movement down to your breath. So breathing in, your toes go up, breathing out, your toes go away from you. And again, let's just notice where you might be stiff or missing out part of your circle. And then reverse your circle in the other direction. And then this is quite interesting to um, extend, stretch the feet out, the toes out. You're always pressing into the mound of your big toe and stretching out your little toes, stretching the feet is really helpful for opening the lung meridian situated as the feet touch the base of the um, foot, just release and relax your feet. Scrunch your feet in and then open them again. The second, um, the toe did correlate to the ears and the um, eyes. So the second, so the third toe or the um, eyes, ears. So again, you're just activating that. And in yoga, they say, imagine um, the pads of your toes looking up like little periscopes, stretch your feet, and you're activating and exercising the energy uh, meridian is going through to your ears and your eyes in this way, and then just release. And then finally, come to lying. Lying fully on the mat, you might never get up, but lying fully on the mat, and once more, extending one heel, relaxing it, and extending the other heel and relaxing. Your, make sure that you're just comfortably relaxed on the mat. So this time, extend your right heel and raise your right arm above your head. You can be bent at the elbow. Your hand might touch the mat, it might not. And extend your right heel and stretch your right hand. 
Breathing out, turn your head away from your right hand to the left. Breathing in, bring your head back to the center. And breathing out, relax and release your arm and let your foot go. And then breathing in, extend your left heel away from you, your toes go up to the ceiling. Raise your bent left elbow up above you, the hand, back of the hand may or may not touch the ground. Bend your elbow as much as you need to, let's stick under your arm. And then stretch your arm or don't, just have the option to stretch in your hand way into your heel. Breathing out, turn your head away from your left arm towards the right. Breathing in, bring your head back to the center. And breathing out, just take the lowering your arm and relaxing your foot out. And take a couple of breaths here, in and out. So now, just slightly extend your left heel, not hugely, just a subtle extension. Bend your right knee, and the right sole of your foot goes vaguely towards the right and the left inner side of your leg. Take a support or cushion under your right knee if you need to, or under your right thigh. It's lying true. You can um, just place your right hand on the inside of your right thigh. And you might also like to just slide your right hand to the hip level and just feel that fantastic inner opening when uh, at the hip level. If that's hurting, just slightly lift your knee higher to come out of any kind of full opening. And again, use any support that you might need under your thigh or your knee. This allows us to open the leg that we don't necessarily normally do when we're doing standing tree. Just bring your right hand underneath your right thigh to support it to lift your right knee upwards and then slide your right leg away from you and just relax and let it totally go out. Now bringing your attention to your left side, slide your left leg up, turn your um, left knee out and your sole of your left foot can be aiming towards the right leg, below the knee or above the knee, it depends how far you want to open your leg. And again, you can take support under your thigh. So you've got two controls here. One is how high you, you slide your left foot, and also um, how much you open your uh, left knee out to the side. Slightly engage your right heel away from you. That opens, you can feel that opening in your hip. And just take a couple of breaths here. Your left hand can just slightly touch on the inner left thigh, and you'll feel this opening in your uh, left side of the foot, and also opens the whole pelvic area. But then slide your left hand to underneath your left thigh, pick up your uh, left knee, place your left foot on the floor, and then bend your right knee so that both feet are on the floor, and both knees are upright. And then just maybe move your feet fractionally wider towards the edge of the mat. Open your hands like a T along the mat. If that's too strong, and it's just quite a strong under arm opening, you can either lower your hands so that they resemble an A rather than a T, and you can make it a narrow A, or you might prefer to just place your hands on your waist which brings your elbows in slightly. And then just very gently adopt whichever arm position you'd like to. Sway both knees to the right. Your left hip will slightly lift off the ground. And you can turn your head to the left away from your knees. Head and knees come back to the center. And just very gently let both knees go over to the left. Your head can turn gently to the right, and you can either look along the floor or look upwards. Doesn't matter. 
well, there's a difference, but just choose what's comfortable. Head and knees to the center. And just once more on your own time, sway very gently from side to side. You can keep your hands at your waist if you have got them there, or if you want to just move your hands head on your arm position to your abdomen. Your tummy or abdomen slides under your hands, and that also gives it a slightly lower abdominal massage around the knee blade. And then come with your knees to the center, your head is to the center. Adjust your feet now more to the hip part. Maybe press your feet down and lift your um, pelvis just to reset it down to the earth. And just do with your hands, their palms down, do a couple of pelvic tilts. That's arching your back, so there's, there's a little space under your lower back. And then flatten your back, arching your back slightly, and then flatten your back. A very gentle pelvic tilt. So, in a way, this is like cat cow, but at the lower level of the back. But with the ground supporting you, it's just mobilizing your lower abdominal area, it's low, mobilizing your lower spine. Keep the right foot where it is, but do feel that you can move the right foot in closer or narrower. Make any adjustment and then bend your left knee and hold your left knee into your chest, clasping your hands around your left knee. So this when we started the class, we swayed from side to side. We worked on all five energies of the body. And not surprisingly, this clasping the knee into the chest focuses on the, the bottom or the base of the lower, of the, the foundational energy of those five energies. And this is called karma. Just hug your knee into your chest, static movement. Enjoy the stretch across your lower back. For anyone who's ever done their back, it's coming back to you now. Someone strain their lower back, lifting stuff or carrying stuff. And then drop your hands behind your left thigh and explore now into the hamstrings as you raise your left leg up towards the ceiling. You can keep a bend in your knee if you'd like. Extend the left heel and stretch, just feeling that stretch all the way along the back of the leg. And you're going into the sciatic nerve as well along there. You can slide your hands up the back of your leg or walk your hands up, which brings your left leg close to your body. That's another lovely stretch. And if you're particularly uh, keen on your abdominal area, I like to drop my right hand behind my head to support my head and my neck. If you don't need that support, just keep your hands on your leg. But I'm going to drop my hand to support my head and my neck. I breathe out and I lift my head up. My head is supported, your head might not need to be. I feel the tummy muscles engaging, get you up. Then breathing out with the way your head back down again. And bend your left, left knee. And then just very gently place your left foot on the ground. Just sway your knees a little bit from side to side. And then focusing on your right side. Just gently pick up your right knee and hug your right knee into your chest. And this is just a gentle holding of the right side. There would be a tendency for more people to experience pain and strain at their lower back on the right side than there would be on the left side. And that kind of reflects people who effectively are right-handed, not always, but very generally, you'll have more than 50% of people 
um, slightly compromised on their right side. Because they leave with the right side, that's their dominant side. So just enjoy the hugging of the knee into the chest. A static movement. Your skeleton, your bones aren't being asked to do anything. They're just relaxing onto the floor. And so it gives your heavy duty muscles around the lower abdominal area a chance to begin to relax. But they take their time to relax. And then by dropping your hands underneath your right thigh, clasping your hands as you gently extend your right leg up to the ceiling, you can keep your right knee soft, if you like, and then extend your right heel. And just feel the extension all the way along the back of the right leg. Your hamstrings, you're going along the sciatic nerve, all the way, you almost feel that you're standing on the ceiling. And then you can start to walk your hands gently up the back of the leg, bringing the leg slightly closer to you. That might be enough. You can stay here. If you want to activate your core, you can either keep your hands on your leg and lift your head up on an exhalation. Or you can drop a hand, I don't mind which, behind your head, supporting your head and your neck as you breathe out and lift your head slightly towards your extended leg. Tummy comes in. And then just release back, your head goes back onto the ground. And very, very gently bend your right knee into your chest and lift it once more. Now bend in your left knee. So you're having both knees into the chest. Your knees are slightly in a V, they're slightly apart. And just begin to circle the knees in one direction, holding your knees. Make circles as your knees come together, you circle and they go away and then they come together. And feel the massage across your lower back as you're doing this almost onto your sacral area. It's right on that very uh, area where you can get a stiff back. And then very gently, if you'd like to, that is reverse your circle. And then very gently supporting your legs as you bring your feet once more back down to the ground. And then very gently roll over to one side, all come in your own time to a gentle seated position. Take your time, you've been on the ground for a while, just give your body a chance to orientate to the change of position. I think also, especially now because it's so hot, we can um, dehydrate very easily. We will feel that we can get. So we're coming to a seated position. Hopefully you can see me. I can't see you, but hopefully that can do. And come to a very gentle cross-leg position. And just holding your below your knees, sitting up, breathing out as you round down, sitting up. And breathing out as you round down. It's a cat cow that's seated, sitting up and breathing out as you round down. Sit up gently and just slide one hand out slightly, raising your hand. You can bend at the elbow, just stretch your hand out. Tummy comes in, it's a lateral stretch. You can look straight forward or you can look down. Tummy in as you lift your hand up and lower your hand. And then we come to the other side where we lift up. And just come over to the other side. Looking either straight ahead or looking down to your outstretched hand. Come up. 
sit up and then just very, very gently slide your hands forward a little bit, coming into a forward bend. Don't come very far. And then slide your hands back and come very gently onto your knees, your hands and knees, where we're going to repeat that cat movement, that cat hand movement. So, thumb and second finger engage into the ground. The inner seams of your inside arm, almost like your inner elbows are facing each other. Spread your hands, the man with your thumb is down and your second finger. And then inhale, dip your back, either looking along the lat or up, depending, up is classic, along the lat, if you stick neck. And breathing out, round chin comes to chest. As you inhale and dip in your back. And breathing out, rounding chin to chest. As you inhale and dip in your back. And rounding chin to chest. Dip your back. To the mouth. This very odd and peculiar practice is called Ashri Mudra. Just slightly pulse, tense in your inhale, you can tense your perineum actually better, but tense the perineum if you can isolate it. If your bottom gets involved, that's fine, and just release. Tense and release. Tense and release. You're toning your inner abdominal area. When people say bring your tummy in and stand up straight, that's just focusing on the external movement. By just slightly tensing, releasing, and relaxing, you're activating the control internally. So it gives you know, a huge support to everything. And then just very gently tapping your toes. If down the dogs aren't good for you, then just stay in cat, cow. But if you are okay, Bringing your hands maybe a little bit back to you, as you lift one leg and then the other. Knees bent. Feel that you can adjust your feet wider, maybe. Knees soft. And come to a downward dog. So bending your knees, bottom away from your hands, and then straightening. And then bottom away and straightening. So the sacrum um, has. Um, I was reading a direct correlation on your lungs, and it's too complicated to explain. So this is very helpful in your lung capacity, which is like a bizarre thing. It goes into Chinese medicine um, as to why this should happen, but really interesting. Um, I completely understand that your head coming down might not suit you from the point of view of dizziness. There are downward dogs where you have lots of bolsters built up and your head supported, but for the moment, we're just going to bend our knees and walk our hands to our feet, our feet to our hands to begin to half roll up, but really bending the knees and clasping the elbows and your weight of your torso is supported by your um, bent knees or thighs, but then just drop your hands, you've been down for quite a long time. And gradually roll up vertebra by vertebra. Use your hands against your uh, legs to support you to come up to a standing position and just notice the blood in your head, everything seems to readjust. And come standing with your feet hip width apart. Again, spread your toes. And like playing piano, which I can't do with my feet, press your toes down. So go one big toe, just, just fan your feet out and then start at your little toes and fan them back in again. How difficult is that? I do so admire artists who paint with their feet. Um, but then just notice the mound of your big toe pressing down. Spread your little toes and you balance the weight from here to here. 
and notice where your heel is connecting with the ground and notice where uh, it's at its central, whether it's internal to the heel or whether it's outside the heel. Lift and roll your shoulders. Pressing your feet down, tense your knees and release them. If you do that again, you'll notice your inner psoas muscle along the legs tenses. Tense and release. Notice if your bottom gets involved in tensing. And then notice if your inner and outer legs, which I grant you is difficult, are supporting you equally on your feet. Lift and roll your shoulders. This has the effect of opening the L1 and L2 areas, the lung areas, under your shoulders. And imagine eyes here, like mini mouse, open and the eyelashes are up and fluttering. If the eyes are closed, then um, the shoulders droop forward. Drooping forward the shoulders curves the thoracic and then you start to curve in that ceiling, you start to compress into your lungs, diaphragm, nothing, everything gets squashed, including your abdominal area. So lift and roll your shoulders. Just turn your head from side to side. Balancing your head on top of your body. Notice if you are leaning forward or if you're standing straight or beginning to lean backwards. When you're on your own, maybe look in the mirror, are you actually plumb lying or are you leaning forward? Bring your thumbs together, raise your hands up and just gently sway from side to side. Keep the sway quite minimal and make sure that your head stays center between your arms. Come to the center, press your feet down, hands go to the ceiling, and then begin, if only if you're next to you, to look up and slightly bring your hands back so it becomes a back bend. And then breathing out, come centrally, and then breathing out, lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders. Bring your hands together. Again, I don't know if I can explain this. If I do it, you'll, again, slightly dance through pose. You're uh, rolling the backs of the hands together. Very helpful for the wrists. Very helpful if you're sitting in front of um, the computer or working um, with your hands a lot to open the wrists out. And then reverse the movement. That doesn't mess with your mind. And then stretch your fingers and in and out, stretching. Flick them in and out. Pull the fingers, very good for arthritis. That and the previous one, flicking the fingers. Just shake the hands out. And then come very, very gently to feet hip width apart. They're going to do a balance. I'm not as good at balancing with the knickies, so clasp your hands together in reverse and then just lift your heels. It focuses your mind and it asks the left and the right side of the brain to, to concentrate and stay here as long or as little as you'd like. And then lower your heels and just release your arms back down, lifting and rolling your shoulders. Bring your hands together. Press the palms together so that you'll feel the stretch here. If you press your palms evenly and then release that push and roll back down to the ground where we're going to do a very gentle bridge. So feet on the ground, hip width apart, knees are up to the ceiling. Come back onto your elbows and then slide your elbows out to come to line, knees bend, feet hip width apart. Press your feet into the ground as you lift your bottom a little bit, chin tucks in, and you raise your arms above your head, 
the arms can be bent or straight and you come up as little as much as you would like. Breathing out, lower your arms and lower your bottom back down to the ground. And then hug your knees into your chest. Just feel the release of the lower back. This is very strengthening for lower back, which also opens the throat area. Bring your feet back down to the ground. Press your feet into the ground once more as you lift your bottom, raise your arms. Either bent at the elbows, or however much you want to stretch, and chin in to protect your neck. And then breathing out, lower your arms and lower your vertebrae to the ground, including your bottom. And then hug your knees into your chest. And release your feet back down to the ground. And then last time, as you press your feet into the ground, raise your bottom, vertebra by vertebra. Raise as high or as low as you like. Your knees, when I say tracking, uh, they should be always as someone's got their, their hands on your knees and they're pulling your knees towards them, just that they're not splaying out their, their being supporting your weights being supported properly. Lowering your bottom, lowering your hands, and then hug your knees into your chest. And stay here as you just rock, rock gently from side to side. Bring your knees to center and now rock the other way. So hook your knees into your chest as little as much as you would like. Still holding your knees, let them just drift away from you. Hug them into the chest as you breathe out. And breathing in, let them just move slightly away from you. It's a slightly different massage across your lower back. Hugging your knees in, let them drift away, and hugging your knees in, and let them drift away. Support your legs underneath or on the knees as you lower your feet once more to the ground. And just place your hands on your abdomen, elbows are slightly out to the side. And just notice the breath coming in, your abdomen rises, and the breath moves in your abdomen, moves fractionally away from your fingers. And then raise your hands slightly higher to your ribs, which means that your elbows go slightly wider. And you're holding your lower ribs. And imagine breathing into the ribs sideways. You just notice the very subtle movement of the ribs as you breathe in. The ribs flare. And breathing out, the ribs just slightly soften. And then just you might need to bring your elbows in slightly as you move your fingers to your collarbone. And as you breathe in, just imagine the air going in right up to your fingertips, which is actually almost the top of your lungs. Everything's filling up and everything then just drains away. And then just release your hands, bring them along beside you. Stretch your legs out, relax them along the mat. Your feet relax out to the side. Just be comfortable. So in classic yoga, your hands are upturned, but I do understand that everyone likes this, so you can have your hands turned down, or your palms resting on your abdomen, if that's something you prefer. But just be comfortable. And start by just slightly punching your toes and releasing. And extend your heels. 
and release the foot, let the foot drop out. Tense your knee and tense your bottom and just release all that tension. Running your attention up to your chest, physically just lift your chest up away from the floor a fraction and then just release everything back down to the floor. Now consciously raise your shoulders up towards your ears and consciously lower your shoulders away from your ears. And now just let the head roll to one side. Come to the centre and let the head roll to the other side. And just do that a couple of times, just releasing the neck. And come to the centre. And take a moment to have a thought for the day. Could be any thought, wishing yourself or somebody something. Your thought for the day, and just think of it again, and just set that in your attention for a third time, your Sankalpa. And now uh, just bend, gently bend your knees one at a time, and hug your knees into the chest one last time. Just rock from side to side. And you can either stay here relaxing and just drift off, or you can come to a seated position as the end of class. The choice is yours. If you're relaxed in the garden or wherever you are at home, just you want to carry on, that's fine. And I'll see you soon. But otherwise, come to a seated position. And Namaste for a lot of day. And I guess gone, we're gone. Very softly.